Hi boys and girls, happy Wednesday. So you guys, we've been reading this um, read aloud, this amazing read aloud, The Thief of Always. And um, I just wanted to take a quick minute to tell you today's the day. When you log into your Canvas today, there will be a pop quiz there. Are you ready? Have you been watching my YouTube videos? Just kidding, it's April Fool's Day. <laughs> so I thought I would just start with a really funny way to get you guys, because you guys are not allowed to get Miss Polka today, remember? <laughs> okay, we are doing a read aloud, and I wanted to um, start with chapter eight, because we left off at chapter seven last time. This is called Hungry Waters. Take a look at that picture. I just love this book, you guys. I want you to pay special attention to what you think this chapter might be about. That's for real. <laughs> that first day in the holiday house with all its seasons and its spectacles set the pattern for the many that were to follow. When Harvey woke the following morning, the sun was once again pouring through a crack in the curtains, but this time it lay in a warm pool on the pillow beside him. He sat up with a shout and a smile and either one or the other, and sometimes both, remained on his lips for the rest of the day. There was plenty to do. Work on the tree house in the spring morning, followed by food and the laying, up, laying of plans for the afternoon, games and lazy hours in the heat of summer, sometimes with Wendell, sometimes with Lulu, then adventures by the light of a harvest moon, and finally, when the winter wind had blown out of the flames in the pumpkin heads and carpeted the grounds with snow, chilly fun for them all out in the frosty air and a warm Christmas welcome when they were done. It was a day of holidays, the third as fine as the second and the fourth as fine as the third. And very soon Harvey began to forget that there was a dull world out beyond the wall where the great beast February was still sleeping its tedious sleep. His only real remember, reminder of the life he'd left, besides a second telephone call he'd made to his mom and dad just to tell him all was well, was the present he wished for and received that first Christmas, his ark. He thought several times of trying it out on the lake to see if it would float, but it wasn't until the afternoon of the seventh day that he got around to doing so. Wendell had made a real glutton of himself at lunch and he had declared that it was too far, far too hot to play. So Harvey wandered down to the lake on his own with the ark tucked under his arm. He half expected, hoped in fact, to find Lulu down there to keep him company, but the banks of the lake were empty. Once he laid eyes on the gloomy waters, he almost gave up on the idea of a launching, but that meant admitting something to himself that he didn't wish to admit. So he headed down <clears throat> He headed on down to the shore, found a rock to port perch on that looked less precarious than the others, and set his ark on the water. It floated well. He was pleased to see. He pushed it to and fro a little while and then lifted it out and peered inside to see if it was leaking. It was quite watertight, however, so he set it back on the lake and pushed it out again. As he did so, he caught sight of a fish rising from the bottom of the lake its mouth wide open as if it intended to swallow his little vessel whole. He reached out to snatch the ark from the water before it was either sunk or devoured, but in his haste he lost his foot on the slime sickened, slickened rock and with a cry he fell into the lake. The water was icy cold and eager. It quickly closed over his head. He flailed wildly, trying not to imagine the dark depths beneath him or the vast maw of the fish that had been rising from those depths. Turning his face up toward the surface, he started to swim. He could see his ark floating above him, capsized by his fall. Its lead passengers were already sinking. He didn't try to save them, but surfaced, gasping for breath, and paddled toward the shore. It wasn't much of a distance. In less than a minute, he was hauling himself on, up onto the rocks and scrambling away from the bank water pouring from his sleeves and trousers and shoes. Only when his feet were clear of the lake and no hungry fish could snap at his toes did he drop down onto the ground. Though it was midsummer and the sun was blazing somewhere overhead, 
the air around the lake was cold and he soon began to shiver. Before he made his way out into the sun, however, he looked for some sign of his ark. The spot where it had sunk was marked by a forlorn flotilla of wreckage, all of which would soon would join the rest of the ark at the bottom. Of the fish that had seemed so eager to devour him, there was no sign. Perhaps it had swum down into the depths to chew on the drowned menagerie. If so, Harvey hoped it choked on its dinner. He'd lost plenty of toys before. He'd had a brand new bicycle, his prized possession, stolen from the step of his house two birthdays ago. But this loss upset him as much, more, in fact. The idea that the lake now had something that he'd owned was somehow worse than a thief running off with his bike. A thief was warm flesh and blood. The lake was not. His possessions had gone into a nightmare place full of monstrous things, and he felt as though a little part of himself had gone with it down into the dark. He walked away from the lake without looking back, but the breeze that came to warm his face when he broke through the thicket and the sound of birds that pleased his ear could not keep for his could not keep from his mind <laughs> the thought he tried to ignore when he'd gone down to the water. Despite all entertainments that the Holiday House supplied so eagerly, it was a haunted place. And however hard he had tried to ignore his doubts and suppress his questions, they could be ignored and suppressed no longer. Whoever, or whatever, that haunter was, Harvey could not be content now until he'd seen its face and knew its nature. Okay, that chapter was sort of short and sweet. Not so sweet, but short for sure. Hungry Waters, again, okay? So your assignment is today that you're going to read your own book for 20 minutes. You're going to log into Canvas. You're gonna answer the question of the day and you'll fill out your reading log, okay? The other thing is, if you want to fill out your reading logs just once a week on Friday, that is A-OK -okay with me, as long as you're keeping up with it, okay? So, today's question of the day, here we go. I'm going to show it to y'all first, okay? After listening to the Chapter 8 read aloud, what do you think is the deeper meaning of the chapter title, Hungry Waters, okay? Now, this is the word that you need to keep up with right here, right? If this were like a real test or quiz, if you're looking for the meaning, I need you to go deeper, okay? Remember those problems that we were talking about? Remember how we're ranking them? Remember to go deeper into this text, okay? Boys and girls, I hope you have a wonderful first day of April. I miss you all, and we'll see you soon.